even when you're doing the right things financially, sometimes we can feel like we are behind, but these are some signs that you are on the right track and actually doing well financially, even if it doesn't feel like it. You live like you have no money, even though you actually do have money. This is something I've tried to always do. Just because I make a little bit more money doesn't mean I should be spending more money. I try to make sure that all my spending stays the exact same. So if you're doing that and you don't spend an extra hundred just because you have an extra hundred, or an extra thousand or however much you have, but you maintain the same lifestyle, that's a sign that you are practicing delayed gratification and you're not tying your happiness to stuff. You pay your bills on time. 32% of Americans have paid their bills late in the past six months. So if you are consistently paying all your bills at the end of the month on time and not incurring any bad debt through that, then you're on a good spot financially. And if you can continue to either raise your income or lower those expenses, then you'll be able to start saving money and progressing in your financial journey. And it also probably means that you're avoiding the secret inflation, which we'll talk about at the last point of this video. You don't impulse buy or upgrade. This is kind of the era of upgrades right now where uh, there's constantly a new phone, a new laptop, a new car, new clothing trends. There's always something that you could buy that is new and improved and different. And if you have kind of stopped yourself from impulse buying and just spending uh, kind of frivolously, then you are on the right track. Uh, financially, that is a first step. Frugal living is something super important that I talk about all the time. Uh, it's made a big impact in my life. A lot of that just starts with spending less. You actually follow financial creators and content and podcasts and books and audiobooks, YouTube channels, remember to subscribe. But for real, if you are studying and obsessing and listening to a bunch of content on fitness, then most likely over the next year, you're gonna be excited about that and you're actually going to become uh, fit as you start to take action on those things that you're learning. The same thing happens with your finances. If you are going through what I went through, uh, especially at the beginning of my journey and just obsessing about your finances uh, and listening to a bunch of stuff and staying motivated, then you're on the right track and as long as you start to take action on those things that you're learning, you will start to progress. You actually have an emergency fund. Emergency fund is such an important thing and so many people do not have it. So if you have one, that's at least one to hopefully six months uh, worth of living expenses and you're currently working on that, then that is a huge buffer. It's a huge uh, stress off your shoulders. You know that if something bad happens to your car or whatever happens, you're not gonna get into debt over that. So having an emergency fund, super important. If you have one, you are on uh, the right track. You actually have an investing plan. So whether you started investing or not, uh, doesn't matter as much as actually having a plan on how you're investing and, and then maybe saving up to start that. Um, so for me, I started with saving up for a couple years to buy my first rental. So I was saving to start investing. And then once I made that investment, it started to compound and I was able to get my second one and my third one. But it starts with saving with a goal in mind. For a lot of people, that's gonna be stocks instead of real estate. So if you're thinking about starting investing, I actually did uh, a free course. It's investing kind of like 101, kind of going over the stock market and some stuff like that. So if you wanna check it out, uh, there's a link below, it's free. Moving on. You actually talk about money. Most of us spend the best part of our days for the best years of our lives working for money and then we never talk about it. We're kind of ashamed about it. It's something you don't really talk about with people. But if you're open and honest and getting people around you who you can actually talk about your finances with, ask questions, learn from their mistakes, they can learn from yours, then you're gonna be in a good spot. Financially, you're on the right path. I know for me, when I found my group of people that I could talk to about uh, the fire movement and financial independence and all the stuff I was learning, that really motivated me and I learned a lot from them. So if you're talking about money, you're, you're, you're getting there. You bought your car in cash, or at least you could. Cars are one of the biggest wealth killers out there. They are extremely expensive, but if you bought your car in cash, for me, I spent like $3,000 for my first Honda Civic. If you've done something similar, I think this is a huge way to better your finances, avoiding payments, especially avoiding things like leases and buying new cars that depreciate as soon as you drive them off the lot. Occasionally, it does make sense to actually finance a vehicle, but generally my rule of thumb is if you couldn't buy it in cash, 
then you probably shouldn't buy it. So if you paid cash for your car or you could, then you're probably doing something right. You're working towards a 50% savings rate. This is going to be way higher than what most people recommend, which is anywhere from like 15 to 20%. But if you're saving or working on saving 50% of your income, which I know is possible because I've been able to do that on a below average income, then I think that's going to be a, a huge impact in your financial future. Uh, if you mess around with an early retirement calculator, you will see how much your savings rates matter in order to get you to retire a, a, a lot sooner. So lowering your three main expenses and then raising your income uh, really help with that. And if that's something that you're actually focused on and working towards, then that's something like 90 something percent of people will never do or never even try to do. I think it's a great goal. It's something that I've lived by for like five years now, trying to save at least half of everything that I make. You avoid lifestyle inflation. This is the biggest uh, killer for most people is when they make more money, they get a bigger apartment, a better car, better clothes. And it is such a tempting thing. I felt this because my income has gone up and then it's gone down and then up and down. And every time you get more money, you're like, oh, well, maybe we could go out to dinner more often. Maybe we could uh, get a better place or do all these different things. And it's so, so tempting. But there are people who make 100,000 plus that are living paycheck to paycheck. And there's people who make 50,000 make paycheck to paycheck, people who make 300,000 that are living paycheck to paycheck. And it's because the more you make, the more you have to show off that you're being successful by buying that car, buying other stuff. And you're okay with being the millionaire next door and not having to show off for anybody, then you're in a good spot financially. I'm actually doing a book review on this soon. So make sure you subscribe if you want to if you want to see that very good book you can also check out weeble with the link down below to get up to 12 free stocks when you open an account and make a deposit and i'll see you guys next week